stream. Before we have any fun playing RimWorld or Hand of Fate, there is an announcement, an announcement, an announcement that we have to make over here. Some of you have informed me, and yeah, it's true. It, on March 14th, 14th of March, Saturday, it's the it's the national international Pi Day. You know the number Pi is. 3.14 well if you use the stupid american system of dating then uh, the third the, the 14th of march is, is you know 314 so it's like the number pi so it is if it's gonna be the pi day i'm gonna do the pi marathon and it's gonna be the biggest marathon yet since it's gonna be all about the number 314 i'm gonna be streaming for three days 14 hours each which is the biggest yet never made a marathon this big i'm a little bit scared and excited at the same time we're gonna have a ton of fun a ton of fun and because it's the pie day i'm gonna bake a pie i'm gonna be eating a pie during the marathon because you know we gotta be consistent with a the theme we gotta be consistent with a the theme also i will Taking into consideration your your feedback about the subscriber marathon, you want more, but you also want viewer voting marathons, you want big events, and I will be weaving those in. Most of the marathon will be viewer voted gameplay, and the games you can be voting, voting on during the marathon have been decided with the survey you have been filling up in the last week. I will later say which games will be available on the marathon. There may be some surprises as well. On... On the second day of the marathon, on Saturday, on the 14th of March, I will be doing a big free-for-all in Civilization V. Civilization V is one of the most popular games on the survey. So, and, and also, you wanted a big free-for-all thing, a big free-for-all event according to the surveys as well, so I'll give it to you. I'll be playing Civilization V with the subscribers. Now, to do that, I need the subscribers. So, if you have donated anything to the Joyful Rogue stream and you want to play some Civilization with me on Saturday, 14th of March, then let me know. Drop me a message. We will be starting the free-for-all around 3 p.m. GMT plus one. Around 3 p.m. GMT plus one. It's basically the European afternoon. If you want to be playing a Civilization V free-for-all then, if you've got Civilization V with all the expansions and you've got a couple, a good couple of hours on Saturday to play a game with me, and you're agreeing not to do a gigantic coalition of everyone versus Joyful Rogue, then, yeah, drop me a message and I'll sign you up. The If there will be a limited number of places for people to join, then those who signed up first will be the ones who play. If we will have not enough people, I might recruit non-subscribers from the chat, especially from regular viewers, those who are high on the leaderboards. We'll see if we can make it work. It's the first this kind of event on Joyful Rogue Stream, this first of these gigantic free-for-alls, and we'll see how it goes. I'll have to figure some things out on the fly, but one thing I do know is that you gotta let me know ahead of time that you wanna be playing. It's gonna be, again, Saturday the 14th, the, the middle day of the marathon, around 3 p.m. GMT plus one. Let me know if you want to play. Uh, Civ 5 games on quick take about 5 to 10 hours to play. I know I am. That's why I'm doing it during the marathon. It, a, a big marathon like that seems the only sensible time to do such a thing. So I might start it, actually now that I think of it, how about we make it 1 p.m. then? Because it could actually take a long time. So how about we make it 1 p.m. GMT plus 1. 1 p.m. GMT plus 1. Two hours earlier than I said. We'll figure things out on the fly. But yeah, let's make it a little bit earlier. Like 1 p.m. That sounds better. And then on Sunday, because another another pretty popular game on the on the survey is Duelist. And the the first subscriber Duelist subscriber tournament went pretty pretty fun. And I'm hoping to grab more keys from the developers. On Sunday, two weeks from now, on Sunday, the 15th of March, the last day of the marathon, we will be doing another subscriber tournament. The second Duelist subscriber battlegrounds, another round-robin tournament. You can say exclamation tournament on the chat. 
and it'll give you the info of when exactly it happens and when to sign up if you're a subscriber just go right in i'll be happy to see more people that i have invited yesterday into the game come in and kick my ass i need to be dethroned it was such an asshole move to just go ahead and win my own tournament undefeated oh my god i need to be kicked i need my ass kicked in i i need some some i don't know chrysant and cubes to join the tournament and just just dethrone me show me show me who's boss so saturday civilization 5 free for all sunday duelist tournament and Friday, it's mostly going to be viewer-voted gameplay. And then around those two tournament events, there will be viewer-voted gameplay aplenty, let's just say. The games we will be voting on will include, well, obviously, XCOM Enemy Within Long War, which is the by far the most popular game on the survey, with the score of 78. Most people really want more XCOM. Now, I realize today... Beta 15 of XCOM just released, and as I said previously, I am not interested in playing it until it gets fully hotfixed and as stable as it can be before Beta 16 comes out. So I will be continuing my, my stageman approach to Beta 14. Hopefully we can set it up so we can get the temple ship during the marathon, but we'll see. I mean, it's going to be a, a, a lot of games during the marathon. Maybe XCOM will not be that popular considering other titles that will be coming in there. I don't know. I don't know, Tiger. Do you think we're going to get some XCOM? It's crazy. Once I win beta 14 and beta 15 gets stable, I will then give you the new campaign. But until then, we'll be trudging along beta 14. I want to win this thing. The second most popular game with, six, with a score of 62 is Darkest Dungeon. I knew it was going to be popular on the survey, but man, second place so decisively. Almost as good as XCOM. It's crazy popular. So if it was like barely popular on this on the survey i'd probably ignore it until release but since it's like the second most popular game on this stream right now i will give you another playthrough of the beta of darkest dungeon during the marathon it will be with a unique challenge i'm not sure if it's even possible to do but i will do a hardcore challenge of attempting to win the game with only one of each character now i th i'm thinking to make it permadeath like, if a character of that class dies, I can't have another one. But if that proves just absolutely impossible, I might do it with recycling. And just get a new one if, one, if a character dies. And we'll see if I can figure that out. Because I'm not sure about the possibility of such challenge. I've, no one ever tried it, really. It's just an idea off the top of my head. But we may do a Darkest Dungeon with a, with a one-man only, one-man army type i don't know I'll, I'll think of a cool name for the marathon but but there's gonna be a hardcore challenge of the darkest dungeon during the marathon the third most popular game and that just completely blew my mind how popular it is but the third most popular game on the survey is F ftl faster than light with 40 with a score of 41 now for the comparison xcom 78 darkest dungeon 62 ftl 41 so huge disparities between the two th these three games the the XCOM and Darkest Dungeon just blew everything out of the water. FTL is, is a more balanced kind of thing in the voting, where 13 people said they really don't want it, but then 19 said they'd love it, and then 26 would probably watch. So, mostly positive, with some negative opinions, but it, it's more balanced, but still very, positive uh, re very positively received. So I'm going to be playing FTL uh, faster than light, and I, it's going to be with the Captain's Mod which adds way more ships, way more encounters, way more content. Hopefully Captain's Mod is bug-fixed and more stable than before. It was good before, and it's, hopefully it's going to be incredible this time around. I mean, it's almost a year of development, right? Hopefully they've done something with it as well. The, the fifth game, uh, the, I mean, the fourth most popular game is Civilization V with 36 points. I'm going to be playing that on the Saturday uh, at around 1 p.m. with a large free-for-all against the viewers. Or, no, not against the viewers, with the subscribers. I'm not going to be me against them, or it's, it's going to be hopeless. And then Duelist, the fifth game, so it's going to be a tournament. I'm not sure if I'll still put Civilization and Duelist in the global vote. Probably not. And the tournaments will do. Now, the next most popular game is actually Xenonauts. Very surprising, because you've never... In the previous voting, it was the, the, the least popular game. Now it's among the most popular games. So Xenonauts, with the Community's Edition will be much less buggy, much will be having some UI improvements as well. I'm curious to see what those are. Another year of development might have made the game much better than I remember it, and 
I will be starting a new uh, veteran Ironman playthrough during the marathon. If you want it, you'll have it. And then RimWorld, absolutely, in the, uh, absolutely included into the vote. Faria can't play it until the release of the new beta, but Faria did good on the on the poll, and I'll, it will be in my heart and in my mind until it gets available. Civilization Beyond Earth received a decent popularity of 18 points on the on the poll, and I will put it in the general vote. I will continue my domination only playthrough probably if I can still recover it. I mean, I don't think any patch is going to make the game incompatible, right? It's going to be fine to recover it. So I'll just continue that. We'll see. Or maybe I'll think of a new playthrough that I'd like to do. Maybe with new patches and new... So maybe there are some balancing changes to the game or something. I don't know. But I, I will include it in some way in the vo in the global vote. Hand of Fate, of course, going to be included in the global vote. If I beat the game until then, it's going to be the endless mode by then. Dwarf Fortress. Actually, how the fuck... I never saw that coming, but there's there's nine people who very much do not want Dwarf Fortress, and then 18 who'd probably watch, and 10 who would love it. And it's overall a score of 15 then. It's, I never expected Dwarf Fortress to make it into positive score. I never really did, and it did, and what the fuck, am I gonna play it now? I mean, I thought that game was barely even watchable. I mean, I... I I, 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 I barely understand half of the UI of that game. Maybe I'll figure it out by then. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe I'll include it in the, in the global vote. If I, maybe I'll watch some Let's Plays. But honestly, it's kind of boring to watch for me. Maybe it isn't for you. So, shit, if you voted for it in the survey, then you probably want to watch it. So I'll probably add it in the global vote in some way. Sunless Sea going to be included in the global vote with 14 score. It's still very much on the positive. Blood Bowl was a very polarizing one. 15 people really don't want it. 18 people would love it. I'll definitely be in the voting. Shadowrun Dragonfall is a tactical RPG, very story-driven, lots of text, that I will be doing a playthrough of, a let's play of, probably starting on the marathon because it received a very positive... Uh, a pretty positive uh, res reception on the poll with a score of 10. And then with a score of 3, there's Endless Legend, which I suppose then I'll put it in and Age of Wonders right after it with a score of 2. And those were the only games that, were, that had a positive score on the poll. Those games I just mentioned. Only games with a positive score on the poll. Mo any other game and more people didn't want it than wanted it. Of course I will make a... I will play it with some tile set and the Dwarven Therapist almost. I'm not gonna just play with the ASCII. I would never be able... I just wouldn't want to play with the ASCII anyway. You don't need to tell me, don't worry. And then... I might consider putting in some games from the negative score, like... Escapist was only minus 7. Dungeon of the Endless was only minus 7. King's Bounty Games, minus 9. Starcraft, minus 11. Infinity Wars, minus 16. Now, now the, the more serious minus points, like, like Infinity Wars, minus 16, I'll probably just skip. Don't Starve Together, minus 17. Banished, minus 17. Scrolls, minus 18. Ain't gonna be no more scrolls in this stream. Factorio is hopeless. Dominion, apparently, is only fun for those who play with me, but not fun to watch, so no more Dominion. Uh, Invisible Ink, you guys broke my heart with this one. I mean, Invisible Ink is like a stealth XCOM. It's such a cool tactical game from Clay, one of my favorite indie devs, and no one wants it. No one, so many people don't want it. Guys, what's wrong with Invisible Ink? If you voted against Invisible Ink on that poll, and you're right now on the chat, please do tell me why. Because I totally thought this game is awesome. It's legitimately a, a well-designed game. And you guys just do not want it, and I want to know why. Heroes of the Storm ain't gonna make it. Well, actually, no action game is gonna make it. Prismata completely didn't make it. I think Prismata's out of the stream for, for good. I mean, minus 31. People just... People are pretty sure they don't want it. And okay, I hear you. I hear you. Crypt of the Necrodancer, not gonna happen. Hearthstone. Not gonna happen! No, people do not want Hearthstone. <laughs> Alright, No Moria, ain't happening. 
Defense Grid 2, I was thinking maybe I'll pick it up on if you guys want it, but you guys don't. You guys don't. Robocraft, never coming back. Star Realms, not happening. Chaos Reborn, not happening. Many negative votes. What else? What else? Oh, yeah, and the most hated game, the most not wanted game in the entire, in the entirety of the stream. Diablo 3, Reaper of Souls. Please don't play it, Joyful Rogue! I won't, alright. So those are the survey results, and as I said, those games that I mentioned positively will be available for me to play, will be available for you to vote on during the marathon. Thank you for all your input in the survey, it really did help me get clarity of what to do on this stream. Of course, the decision is still mine of what to play, but I will hear you and I will take it into consideration in a big way. I might still play some Prismata if I feel like it, might still play some Crypt of the Necrodancer, but it will be rare and I will not invest too much time into it. Because apparently you don't want it. And still, even if you want Dwarf Fortress, if I don't enjoy that game, because it's just too cluttered of a UI, too crappy of a UI, and maybe it's not that fun for me to play when there's barely any graphics and I don't know what's happening on my screen, then maybe I won't play it still, even though you want it. But hey, I, at least I'm paying attention to it and considering it, which I wouldn't even do if it wasn't a positive on the survey. And also a third aspect, is it the third? I don't even know. Another aspect of the Pi Marathon will be blank ticket giveaways. Now, what is a blank ticket? I've never done that in the past, but a blank ticket will allow you to pick any game out of my list of games for giveaway, which you can access by saying exclamation JD on the stream, which is short for Joyful Document. Inside the Joyful Document, you will find a full list of all the games I have for giveaway. You can pick any of them and spend your blank ticket on getting that game, just like that. So you basically get to pick any game I have for giveaway immediately getting it. Or, if there's nothing you like, you can keep your blank ticket for later, for the future. But in the future, you will only be able to redeem it for 1,000 Joy Coins that you can invest into one giveaway. So in the future, with your blank ticket, you will only be able to get Joy Coins, get a high chance of winning the giveaway. But you can't just keep it in your pocket until a really gigantic giveaway shows up and then take it out of back and then take the giveaway without even rolling for it. Now, you will be able to either get a game immediately or you will be able to get a thousand joy coins for a future giveaway. It seems like the JD command doesn't even work at the moment. I'll fix it with the Moobot by the time this, this announcement hits, hits YouTube. Now, how will you get the blank ticket giveaways? Now, since I haven't received any donations for like one and a half, maybe even two weeks now, I'm feeling to, you know, get, get kind of lonely here. <laughs> Let, let's get them going again. Every single person who donates at least $3.14, you gotta be consistent with the pie theme, you know? So every, uh, for every one, every $3.14 donated, you get one ticket in the giveaway for the blank tickets. So if you donate five times 3.14, then you get five tickets. And at the end of the marathon, I will draw blank tickets and you will have five chances to win one. So it's all depends on how much you donate in comparison to other people who donated during the marathon or in the time leading up to it. From the time this, this announcement is live until the end of the marathon, any donation is eligible for the blank ticket giveaways. Any subscriber payment in that period is also eligible, so you can also subscribe and it also counts for one ticket for the blank ticket giveaway. I will be rolling the dice on who gets the blank tickets at the end of the marathon. And like I said, the more, the more $3.14 donations you, you do, then uh, the, the more chances you have for the blank ticket. The amount of blank tickets given away at the end of the marathon will depend on how much, how much money we will raise together. $314 will give us 10, 10 blank tickets. So if I raise $314 from now until the end of the marathon, 
10 people can just claim a gay out of the joy claim a game out, out of the joyful document or get the thousand joy coins for the future but it's it's a pretty high number so it's probably not gonna happen so if if i raise only half of it then you get half the blank tickets rolled at the end of the stream at the end of the marathon which is gonna be five and then and then so on so if i raise 31.4 31.4 dollars then one blank ticket is gonna be given away and and there will be 10 tickets rolling for it. So I suppose if you donate... three point fourteen, you'll get at least... You'll probably get at least one in a ten chance of just getting game straight up, but... We'll see how it goes until the end. What's up with the pie? Well, the pie marathon will be because I'm doing the marathon on the weekend when the 14th of March happens. Now, the, the 314, the number pi, it's like the International Pie Day. So I'm going to be eating pie and playing, you know, do, and doing a marathon just entirely thematic with, num with the number pi. So, so to sum up, there will be viewer voting and, and Civilization V FFA on Saturday. PM me if you're a subscriber and you want to join the, the free-for-all in Civilization V on, sun, on Saturday. Sunday, tournament in Duelist. Uh, around that, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 14-hour streams with viewer-voted game, viewer gameplay and blank ticket giveaways for people who donate from now until the end of the marathon. You will be able to win a blank ticket that gives you any kind of game. This announcement, this announcement will find its way onto YouTube, and we are going to have so much fun. Three days, 14 hours each, is the biggest marathon I have done up to date. I think I am healthy enough to survive it, and it's going to be a gigantic challenge for me, and a ton of fun for you. Can't wait, can't wait. But for now, let's have some fun with the...